Amen. Please God bless you too. Amen. Okay, please. This life will land some future day. Another life will then begin. Are you prepared? For that event, just after death, what next? Just after death, oh, what's on me? Where will you spend eternity? One time on earth shall cease to be. Just after the one Hallelujah. Amen. Please, please let us humbly bow down our heads for a word of prayer. Our Lord and Master and Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you. We thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful chance and opportunity that you've given unto your children, Lord, that we will listen to your words, Father. Lord, please, we thank you so much for this wonderful chance and opportunity that you have granted unto us. Unto you alone be all the glory. Unto you alone be all the thanks and all the honor and adoration, Father. Father, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, please, we cannot do without you, Lord. Please, Father, can you come and take absolute charge and control, Father? Please be the one to speak unto us this day, Lord. Father, may your glory alone be seen. We have no wisdom or knowledge or strength of our own, Daddy, sweet Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, may your glory alone be seen, Father. May your presence, may your glory alone be seen, Father. We thank you in the mighty name of our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. I will pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Please, by the grace of God, my name is Philippa Crunchy from Ghana. And by the grace of God, I am here to share a certain testimony that the Lord, by His grace, gave unto me. For some years now, the Lord, through His infinite mercy, has been showing so many, revealing certain mysteries unto me since I was a little girl, around the age of 10. We give glory to His name. And please, beloved, the message that the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, has been given unto me is to remind us all of a certain day that is coming. A day which is unlike any other. Beloved, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's coming sooner than we think the time is up. But many people are not prepared for the coming of the Lord. Many people have taken away all the things that we think are big sins away from their lives. But many are the small things that are going to hinder people Christians in particular, from making it when the trumpet of the Lord is to sound. It is my prayer that the Lord will help all of us, for the great day of the living God is indeed at hand. Very soon the trumpet of the Lord will sound. Very soon we are going to know those who serve the Lord faithfully and walk in true holiness and in true righteousness, and those who were just going to church those who are not holy and righteous in the sight of God. Beloved, the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants us to be holy and spotless in His sight. No one can be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven with even a little spot in his or her garment. The book of Revelation makes us understand, according to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 27, Revelation chapter 21 and verse 27. And thus shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Beloved, are we holy? Are we pure? Are we spotless in the sight of this great God? If the trumpet of the Lord is to sound, will we be found wanting or not? 
with the bitterness, with the hidden sins, the secret sins that some of them we do not even realize. Are we ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? Behold, the word of the Lord says that no one is going to enter into heaven with any sort of defilement. There is no name with a stain which is going to enter into heaven, into the book of life, beloved. Are we holy? Are we spotless in the sight of this great God? No name with a stain on it can enter into the Holy Lamb's book of life. Are we pure? Are we spotless? Are we rapture ready? By the grace of God, the title of this testimony is Be a a Spotless Bride of Christ. Be a Spotless Bride of Christ. Please let us humbly read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to verse 27. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to verse 27. Husbands, Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Beloved, are we right in the sight of God? With the little gossips that we do say, that we do utter, with the bitterness, the envy, the jealousy that we hide in our hearts, are we ready for the coming of the Lord? Behold, very soon a cry is going to sound. Behold, very soon the bridegroom is going to come for his own. But will we be like the five wise virgins or the five foolish ones? Behold, the five foolish virgins thought that they were ready. They also had their lambs. They also went with the five wise virgins. But behold, when the time was finally due, they were all asleep. And when they had the midnight cry, behold, they readied your lambs and they were out of oil. And then it was too late for them. When they returned after going to buy some, the five wise virgins were gone and it was left with the five foolish ones. They cried for mercy. They cried for a chance. They are going to cry for mercy. But the Lord is going to on that day say that depart from me. I never knew you. May the Lord help us so that this shall never be our portion. Those five foolish virgins, they all attend the church. They all said that they were living holy and righteous lives. But what about within? Are we truly pure in the sight of God? In our hearts, in our minds, are we truly pure in the sight of God? When we dress for our fellow believers to see us, they see us as being holy. But when no one else is around from our church places, what kind of things do we say? What clothes do we put on? Are we truly holy and spotless and right in the sight of this great God? By the special grace of God, we were having, we were having a, an all-night service at church. And during that time, I was feeling so dizzy and I was afraid that I would fall. And so my mother took me to the office where I lay down to rest, to sleep. And whilst there, my breath began to leave my body. And by the grace of God, I saw our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ appear with two beautiful horses. And all of a sudden, I saw that my, our Lord Jesus Christ was shining bright as usual. And by God's grace, I saw that my garment had changed into a sort of heavenly garment, a white, beautiful garment. So I was thinking that maybe are we going to heaven? Then the Lord told me to come to him. And he showed me the holes in his hands. And he said to me by his grace, this is your Lord Jesus. I was thinking that maybe we were going to heaven. But the Lord told me that no, but he is going to show me the flight of that day. Beloved, there is a certain flight which is unlike any other. 
And if we lose our tickets for that flight, oh, what a weeping and wailing is going to happen on that day. There is a flight which is going to take place one day, dearly beloved. And there is no second flight after that. It is our flight into eternity. When our faith are going to be sealed, but beloved, are we ready? Are we rapture ready? Are we rapture ready? Are we ready for the coming of the Lord? Are we holy, pure, and spotless in the sight of God? It doesn't matter that the Lord by His grace is speaking through me. I also need to be ready for a day on like any other is coming. When we will see that the Lord is the Holy One of Israel. That we will see that He alone is holy. And on that day, He is not going to entertain anyone. On that day, He will prove that He is no respecter of persons. On that day, he is going to prove that it doesn't matter your position in the church. It doesn't matter the title that you are having. On that day, on that day, only true believers will be raptured. When we say that we are on our way to church, we all go together. But how many of us are truly prepared within and without? How many of us are there that the king beholds and says that indeed this is my child with whom I am well pleased. May the Lord have mercy upon all of us so that none of us shall meet that great plight on that day. So please, when our Lord Jesus Christ by his grace told me that he's going to show me the flight on that day, he told me to try my best to remember everything that he's going to reveal. Then he set me upon one of the horses. He told me that I should know that he is going to be with me. And as soon as he set me upon the horse, all of a sudden, I realized that I wasn't with the Lord. I was in a large place, a large hall, like the waiting area where we sit down to wait for a plane before a flight. It was a large waiting hall. And there were people of every color, from all walks of life, sitting at that place. People from different races, age groups, ethnic groups, etc. The old and the young, the weak and the strong, the poor and the rich. Beloved, on that day none of those things are going to matter. But only those who have served the Lord with all their heart no matter what, and have lived lives that are holy and righteous, who have not held on to bitterness, who have not held on to the things of the world. Only they are going to be raptured on that final day. Only they are going to be raptured on that final day. By the grace of God, when I saw those people, I realized that I was invisible to them. They could not see me, and they had waited for a very long time. We were all there, and finally, the plane arrived. And when the plane arrived, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was the one on that plane. And beloved, he looked so fearful. On that day, you will not see him as the loving God that we know that God is merciful, God is gracious. The Bible makes us understand according to the book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 22. That behold for the goodness and the severity of God. Behold the goodness and the severity of God. If only we will continue in him, then his goodness will be shown. But beloved, if we fall away, then we are going to see the other side of God. May the Lord richly forbid that in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. And when our Lord Jesus Christ appeared, he looked so fearful. There were angels with him, two powerful angels, and the light that radiated from the Lord. The face of the Lord and from these two angels, beloved, it was so brilliant the eyes could not behold. The angels' wings covered the face of the Lord. It was so bright and shiny. The face of the Lord was so bright and shiny. 
And beloved, it was so fearful. It was so fearful. And upon all the, num the number of people, upon the number of people that were gathered there, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by his grace came, he said that he is holy. And so he cannot take any of the other people with him except only one person. Only one person was taken. The Lord, after by his grace, made me understand that. That one person represents the few that are going to make it. Beloved, are we a part of that number? Are we a part of those saints that are ready in the sight of the Lord? The Lord said he cannot take any of the others. Why? Because of some secret sins in their lives. He cannot take them with him because of some secret sins in their lives. Those that some of them do not even know. And they knelt down and they began to cry, telling the Lord not to leave them. They asked the Lord, that what have they done wrong against him? Beloved, the Bible makes us understand according to the book of Revelation, chapter 6 and verse 12 following, that a day is coming, the bold, the poor, the rich, the slave, the free man, the lowest man, the greatest man, are going to run to the hills, to the mountains, to the rocks. They're going to run to the mountains and cry unto them that they should fall upon them. But on that day, there shall be no way of escape. The people began to cry, but beloved, it was too late. Please let us not allow it to be too late for us. Please let us stop whatsoever secret sin that we are holding on to. The Lord, by his grace through his infinite mercy, began to tell them, one after the other, the secret sins that they had in their lives that they did not even know. And one person, the Lord said, that the person had something in the heart against the pastor because of the word. Because of how the pastor preaches, because of the truth that the pastor speaks, the person had bitterness in the heart against that pastor. And that was the secret sin. Beloved, let us not forget what the Bible says according to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 15. We need to let go of every seed, every root of bitterness. So that it does not hinder us from making it to heaven. Then the Lord went to the second person. And that second person had been given a cloth. And the person's sister in the Lord had also been given a cloth. And she said to herself that the cloth that her sister had was more beautiful than the one she had received. And because of that, she wasn't content with hers. And the Lord said, the why? The Lord asked the why was she complaining in her heart? Why did she convert that which belongs to another? Well, she has been given what she needs. He said his word says in Psalm 23 and verse 1 that, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Meaning that we ought not to convert that which belongs to another. And because of the sin of covetousness, this person also, the Lord did not take this person when he was coming to rapture his own. Let us not forget what the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says. That we should not let our conversation be with covetousness. But we ought to be content. Beloved, when the brother or sister at your workplace had that promotion, were we not jealous or covetous in our hearts? Did we not seek to have the same thing with the wrong motive? The Lord is watching you and I. Behold, his word says that everything is open before this great God. The third person also came. The Lord moved to the third person. And the Lord said that that person was late to church. And the person was laid to church without asking for forgiveness of sins. 
The person was late to church. Beloved, how many times have we been late in the sight of the Lord that we did not ask for forgiveness of sins? Not knowing this great God is looking at all these things. They are all sins in the sight. of the living God. The only at church. The workplaces, when we give time, when we are meeting somebody, when we go to meet somebody, the, are we punctual? Are we people of integrity? Are we people of our words? Behold, the angels of the Lord are around us writing everything down. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are watching. Are we right in the sight of this great God? And the Lord, by his grace, moved to the fourth person. And that one was a small child. You could see that this child is innocent. And when the child's mother had given money to buy something, the child had used some of the money, had used the money to buy some water or so without informing the mother about the truth. The child forgot to inform the mother about it. And the Lord said, that was stealing in his sight. The Lord said that the child has stolen in his sight. And because of that, so long as the child knows the difference between right and evil, good and bad, that child was not taken with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Beloved, this is the holy standard of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Lord's holy standard. This is the God who did not compromise during the times of old. And he shall never ever compromise now. Only those who meet the standard of the Lord are going to be raptured. Only those who meet the standard of the Lord are going to be raptured. And we are to that standard. Are we holy? Are we right? Are we spotless in the sight of God? Are we ready for the coming of the Lord? If the Lord is to judge us now, will we be found wanting or not? May the Lord have mercy upon us. May the Lord have mercy upon us. May the Lord have mercy upon us. And after this, the Lord, by his grace, moved to the next person. And the Lord said that whilst this person was filling forms and was asked to write their full names, the person used a false name, a nickname, instead of their true names. And the Lord said that it is a lie in his sight. Beloved, this is so serious. In the filling of our documents on the internet, when we are traveling, the false that we use the nicknames, when we are asked to write names that we use, the Lord said that those are all lies in His sight. The Lord said that is a lie in His sight. According to the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8. The Bible says that all liars shall be cast away on that final day. He didn't say that those who lied a little bit to save their names or to get some documents and papers to travel or to stay abroad. No, he didn't say that those who lie to keep their names false in any way. He said all liars. And all liars means every type of lie. Even those that we say are white so-called lies. Every lie is wrong and it's a sin in the sight of this great God. May the Lord have mercy upon us. May the Lord help us for this is so serious. And then the Lord by his grace moved to the next person. And the Lord said that the person, some people choose that, yes, they've read and accepted the terms and conditions pertaining to something, maybe on the internet, 
You might be filling some forms. They will ask you, have you read and accepted the terms of service, the terms of conditions, the privacy policies, and will say that, yes, we have read it, whilst we have not. This is also not right in the sight of this great God. The Lord says that it is a lie in his sight. It is a lie in the sight of God. Copying videos with copyrights was the crime of the next person. The Lord said that if you copy a video which has a copyright, beloved, if we do that, it is a sin in the sight of God. If we have not asked for permission, it is stealing in the sight of God. The Lord made me understand that that is stealing in his sight. Some even use those videos that they copy to preach. But beloved, it does not justify the action. The end in this case does not justify the means. May the Lord have mercy upon us. The Lord says that the Lord went to the next person and by his grace he said that the person forgot to study the word of the Lord daily. There was a day that the person did not study the word of the living God. Beloved, we are all found wanting. Sometimes you might feel we might think that we are too tired. Are we really people who are close to God through his word? The book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, The Lord commanded Joshua to meditate upon his word day, afternoon, in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. Are we truly doing this? Are we truly doing this? If even one day we forget to study or read the word of the Lord, the Lord says that it is a sin in his sight. And because of that, the person could not make it with him. The Lord then went to the next person. And the Lord said, that person did not give he the Lord 100% of their time. Beloved, we might think that how can this be? We go to work, we do certain things, so how can we give 100% of our time to the Lord? But beloved, even in our workplaces, we need to make sure that our hearts and our minds are totally fixed upon the Lord. We need to have constant fellowship with the Lord as much as we are able to. We need to love the Lord with all our hearts. Even as Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 says, Then the Lord moved to the next person. And the Lord said that that person that did not have enough zeal for God's work as the person was supposed to have. Maybe you could be doing the work of the living God. We could be working for the Lord. We could be sharing the gospel. But do we really do it with that zeal for the Lord? Or must we be pressured before we do something for our God? Do we do it with a perfect heart? Do we do it with all our might? Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says that whatever we do, we need to work at it with all our hearts as working for the Lord and not for men. Do we work for the Lord or we try to do certain things that will please man? In Galatians chapter 1 verse 10, the apostle Paul said that if he yet please man, then he will not be a servant of Christ Jesus. We only claim or seem to serve the Lord. There are some people, sometimes we might only start working so hard for people to see when people are around. But what if when no one is watching us? What if when no human being is watching us? Do we work fervently for the Lord? Or we do it anyhow? At our workplaces, do we do the work that we ought to do with all our hearts as working for the Lord? All of those things have been entrusted into our care by the Lord, that we might be good stewards in His sight. But are we truly faithful? The Lord then went to the next person, and He said 
that when that person has free time, instead of using it for he the Lord, the person will use it for something of no importance. Instead of reading the Bible and praying, the person will use it for something that is not important. That is why the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. We ought to dwell in the presence of the Lord at every given moment, not doing things that are unimportant in the sight of God. Please let us dedicate all of our time, everything of ours, our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits, and our bodies unto the Lord. And the final one was someone who promises and fails. You could, someone could say that, please pray for me. The sin of that person was that the person promised and failed. That you could promise the Lord, the Lord, please, I give you my lifetime. Everything you say, I will do. Oh, the Lord, please do this for me. And I will do this for you. But when the time finally comes and we are to fulfill that promise, we find ourselves wanting. Someone could ask us to pray for them. We will say, okay, and we will forget to do that. All of those are promises that we failed in the sight of God. And the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 4 makes us understand that God doesn't like people who are slack concerning their vows. We need to keep our promises both to the Lord and to human beings. For the Lord is looking at that all. And the Lord said that those people, the Lord made me understand, the Lord made me understand by his grace. That those people did not ask the Lord to forgive them of their secret sins and were left behind. And the Lord told me to come and warn his children. Beloved, the Lord is warning you and I. Please, we must know that without holiness, no one can see the Lord. Without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no one can make it to heaven. May the Lord help us this day and strengthen us so that we will be a spotless bride unto him. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. We are going to.